Hi guys. Um, in this video, I would like to um, deal with an interesting question, and that is how do we classify mathematics, right? Where does it belong? Like, what is it? Like, is it, uh, you know, a science? Is it an art? Is it a language? Is it a philosophy or is it, you know, something that uh, totally exists by itself? Okay. A pretty hard question to answer and, um, you know, maybe I'm not correct, but I will give you my answer. Okay. And it will surprise you, I guarantee. So, uh, first of all, is mathematics a science? Well, it is absolutely not a science. Uh, you know, yes, it is abstract. Okay, I mean, you know, sciences have to do with uh, sort of uh, you know classifications. Uh, you know, such as in chemistry. You know, we have you know uh, acids and bases. Uh, you know, in physics we have uh, fields and forces and uh, interactions. You know, yes, uh, mathematics is definitely abstract and, you know, it has to do with these kind of, uh, you know, general generalized concepts. But uh, the thing that, uh, you know, lacks in mathematics and which is present in other, you know, sciences is experiment. Okay, there is nothing empirical about mathematics. You know, there is no, uh, you know, touch, smell, uh, hear like there is no sensation there is no uh, experiment uh, there is no labs in you know mathematics and you know that's what makes you know sciences sciences you know they have uh, you know some kind of physical evidence you know they have experiments uh, you know which can be falsified you know like you make a hypothesis uh, you know you do your experiment in a lab and you know your you know hypothesis gets confirmed or discarded but in mathematics, that's absolutely not the case. Okay, there is no, uh, you know, physical, uh, empirical verification for mathematical theories. It's all in the mind. Okay, um, so math is definitely not a science. Okay, so you know, perhaps math is simply a language you know and this one is an interesting uh you know position you know like is mathematics just a language you know like we have all these languages um and uh somehow you know mathematics is just simply a language you know it's kind of a postmodernist uh you know theory a lot of uh you know postmodernists uh that's kind of what they say uh about mathematics it's uh you know just kind of a language uh you know, there is really nothing else to it. It's just uh, a system of abstract, uh, you know, symbols which interact with one another. And, uh, you know, that's it. Well, uh, that is not the case either, you know, because, uh, you know, definitely, you know, mathematics has, uh, you know, symbols. Uh, but mathematics has precision, okay, which languages don't have. Okay, now... Uh, you know, each language has exceptions, okay? I mean, I mean, for instance, in English, you know, like you're not supposed to uh, use the in front of uh, uh, proper names, you know, like you don't say, I, uh, you know, saw the Steve today, you know, you don't say, I saw, uh, you know, the Bob today. <laughs> That's, you know, not how you speak uh, in English. However, there is an exception, you know, we have the US, you know, I went to the US, I mean, USA, you know, United States of America is a country, so it's a proper name, but, you know, we use the in front of it. Uh, you know, there is even a city which has the, you know, interesting question, do you know that city? Well, it's city, the Hague, okay? Um, so, you know, whatever rules uh, you have in a language, you know, like, uh, you know, pick up any, you know, grammar textbook for any language, you know, you'll see, you know, all these rules and, you know, like all these conjugations and, you know, particles and tenses and whatever. And, you know, whatever rule you have, you always have an exception to it in a language, okay? But you don't have exceptions in mathematics, okay? You just don't. Like, I mean, if something is, you know, proven to be the case, it is true 
forever and ever. You know, like a lot of things Euclid proved, uh, you know, 2,300 years ago, they're still true today. I mean, they're just as true today as they were back then. You know, like they're not going to change. You know, and another thing is, you know, languages, you know, they change over time. Okay. Uh, like, for instance, in English, uh, you know, we say you, okay, you know, you, but th there was this, uh, you know, way of addressing someone as, you know, thou, okay, which is no longer used, but it was uh, present in the English language, you know, until, you know, just like 100 years ago. So things and, you know, languages change and they have exceptions and mathematics doesn't, okay. So uh, mathematics is not a language okay so uh, then you know there is an interesting theory uh, that uh, mathematics is logic okay so this uh, philosophy is called logicism it was uh, you know there was a lot of excitement uh, you know around this idea when it uh, first uh, came about uh, at the beginning of the 20th century and, uh, you know, th there was like some success, uh, you know, uh, especially, uh, you know, this philosopher named Gottlob Frege, uh, one of the greatest analytic philosophers. Uh, he, uh, to some extent, uh, you know, successfully showed that uh, mathematics is logic. But, you know, there were major, major flaws uh, in his uh, approach, you know, pointed out by Bertrand Russell and Wittgenstein and, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, this approach w did seem promising, but, um, you know, really later on into the 20th century, it was uh, kind of uh, shown to be, uh, you know, mistaken, okay? And uh, the kind of knockout blow was delivered by Kurt Gödel with his uh, incompleteness uh, papers, uh, you know, really uh, revolutionary stuff uh, published, uh, you know, in the uh, 1920s by Kurt Gödel, uh, you know, which pretty much uh, showed that, uh, you know, whatever uh, mathematical system you build, you, you know, using logic will be incomplete. So, uh, you know, mathematical truth will always escape sort of, uh, you know, logical constructs, okay, that's uh, one way of putting it. Uh, so mathematics is not logic either. So, um, you know, so far we looked at uh, three theories. Uh, well, what else? Well, of course, uh, I mean, psychology. Well, definitely uh, mathematics is not psycho. Excuse me, someone just rang my bell one sec. So, yeah, it's definitely not, you know, psychology because psychology is a purely, purely empirical, uh, you know, discipline. Okay, there, there is nothing a priori. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say nothing, but, you know, psychology, uh, you know, kind of human, you know, thinking, uh, it's very, you know, empirical, it's very arbitrary. And, you know, mathematics is just way too precise, uh, you know, way too a priori for you know, for it to be a psychology, um, you know, for more uh, details on this, uh, you know, specific topic about why mathematics and logic are not uh, parts of psychology, you should read uh, Edmund Husserl's Logical Investigations, a really revolutionary book, book uh, published in 1900, uh, launched, uh, you know, phenomenology as we know it, you know, which later on uh, kind of achieved, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, controversy and, uh, you know, different results in, you know, Heidegger and Sartre and, you know, guys like that. So it started with uh, Husserl's logical investigations. So mathematics is without a doubt not a branch of psychology. So now you might wonder, well, you know, if it's not one of these things, uh, you know, mathematics must be just a separate discipline okay it's just mathematics and then there are these you know other disciplines okay uh, and that's not the case actually surprisingly you see uh, mathematics is scholasticism okay that's what it is so scholasticism was a medieval um, 
philosophical theology, okay? Uh, the most famous, uh, you know, scholastic was the great, uh, you know, Catholic philosopher and saint named uh, Thomas Aquinas, okay? Very famous, uh, you know, theologian uh, wrote a monstrous book called uh, Summa Theologica, okay? So scholasticism was this very, you know, complicated, uh, you know, philosophical system which tried to unify you know, Christian dogmas with uh, ancient Greek philosophy. So, uh, you know, and, you know, scholastics used very intricate, uh, you know, and a lot of times uh, annoying, you know, arguments to, you know, prove things about the world. You know, like, for instance, uh, you know, God, does he exist or not? You know, question. Well, you know, here's the answer. Well, God is that of which no greater being can be thought, okay? And in fact, he's so great that even, you know, thinking that he does not exist would imply, you know, that he is not the greatest, you know, being. So he is so great that, uh, you know, thinking that he does not exist kind of contradicts the concept of the, you know, greatest being. So therefore he exists, you know, simply because, uh, you know, not existing is not a part of the concept God. And we do have this concept God, so he exists. You know, that's just one example. Um, and that's what mathematics is. It's just this very, um, you know, complicated concept juggling. Okay, that's what it is. It's uh, very abstract, very systematic, very logical, uh, you know, but it's, you know, way out there, you know, so... Uh, really, you know, the best way of classifying, you know, mathematics is, you know, to say that it's just a branch, I mean, not a branch, but that it is a type of scholasticism, okay? So, things that make scholasticism scholasticism make mathematics mathematics, okay? <laughs> and, uh, you know, similarly, uh, you know, kind of mathematics is, uh, you know, it is abstract, like scholasticism, it is incomprehensible like scholasticism for most people um you know and it's non-physical you can say it's uh, really it goes way beyond you know the physical um so yeah math is just simply scholasticism and if you ask uh you know a mathematician most of them agree with this